Hello everyone, Violet here and today we are going to do a collective reading. So we have a full moon coming up and it's also a lunar eclipse which makes it a blood moon. Um, so the moon might appear red and it is also in Taurus. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about this moon to do this reading. It's upcoming this next Saturday and um, I pulled out all of the red cards, <laughs> all of the cards with mostly red in them um, from all of my decks that, you know, I pulled off of the shelf. And um, what we're going to be doing is using these cards to create a big blood moon of our own. We're going to create a circle and um, almost see what the cards have to tell us, what messages want to come through, almost like we're like forming a sentence or a story with the wheel of cards. And I've been thinking about this moon leading up to this and I was reading about eclipses and how eclipses are almost like, almost like pressure releases. So imagine that there's like a lot of heat, a lot of pressure that, that builds up either down here below on earth or like above in the heavens and this is the sort of pressure release button if that would make sense so it can feel quite intense and things can feel quite chaotic and it's really good during an eclipse time to think about what energy are you allowing in and what energy are you putting out so with that in mind i've been thinking about taurus and um, it feels to me like this blood moon might have some shadow worky type element elements to it, like seeing our shadow, facing our shadow. And with Taurus, it, it also feels, it feels like root chakra stuff and it feels also, and that's also the color red, but it also feels like um, perhaps issues around like material desires, that sort of thing. So. Let's see what the cards have to say. I'm really excited to get into this. Um, so uh, we've done we've done this type of reading before where we pull out all of the cards of a certain color. We do it for the pink moon in the spring. We do it for blue moons when you know there's there's a blue moon. And this time, like I said, we're gonna create a full moon, full blood moon of our own. So let's take a look. Um, so I have the cards charged and ready to go. And what is our first? message for the collective revelation so i feel like um as we were talking about shadow elements that might might make themselves known i think that that's a big thing with this card is um what reveals itself what makes itself known and um and then being able to face it so in in a way you can see some of these like these um darker or more hidden aspects, these things that maybe we've pushed down, hey, there we go, pressure release, things that we've pushed down and and now it kind of has this moment to pop up and arise. It might feel very intense and feel very negative as it is happening for you, but in actuality, this is a positive thing. This is the this is the rising sun. This is the um, like the realization, the revelation, and being able to see something for what it is. I feel like, and perhaps this will come up later, but a lot of this, it's like, all right, it, if this is kind of making itself known, then the question is, what do we do with that? You know, um, so that's what I'm feeling from this card. I kind of I want to keep going and see and see what we start to get. What what is our next card here? The Four of Wands. Mmm. I mean, that's a beautiful card for commitment, for celebration. Let's get another card in here so that we can really kind of make this make sense. And joy. You know, I think that for all of the intensity, there's something like celebratory and joyful about this release as well. And I wonder... You know, something that's really coming to mind is that is that I feel like we've been having to um, sort of absorb, like, we've been kind of placed into a position where we have to absorb a whole lot, um, and there's, like, 
a lot coming from a lot of different directions and I think it has created sort of like a swirling pool I feel like emotionally it feels to me like a swirling pool of anxiety of not knowing of kind of getting like swept downwards and I wonder if this is actually calling us to you know at this time pull ourselves upward get together with loved ones you know, if you can get together with loved ones this weekend, um, do something that brings you joy, that speaks to your heart. Because partially when things feel really intense, sometimes we want to lock away and close off our heart. And um, the number four is interesting to me with that, because sometimes I think of four as, as being the sort of like putting something in a box. But with the four of wands specifically, and then followed by joy, it feels to me like this is like letting the vo box be open, like acknowledging the, um, the feeling of wanting to lock these feelings away and put them away in a box, but instead have something have something that you are opening up to this weekend. Have something that you are looking forward to, something that you are letting in. Because once again, it's the conscious decision of what do you let in, what do you keep out? And it's not just what do you keep out, but it's also like, you know, what is the energy that you let into? <laughs> Sorry, that was like, that sounded very redundant. Um, let's get our next card here. Our Lady of Blessings Bestowed. Yeah, I can't help but feel like, there almost feels like there's a fear element to this card, Revelation. Like when I think of Revelation, I also think of like the book of Revelations in the Bible, for example. This is just an example, which is a very like charged book and it has a lot of question marks. It has a lot of fear associated to it. You know, there's a, there's a lot of things that, um, I don't know, that book is just really coming to mind right now. And 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 then I just see these cards as almost like leading us out of a place of fear and into a realization that there are there are blessings behind the fear or beyond the fear or underneath the fear or through the fear. Through the fear. There are blessings through the fear. Does that make sense? like I'm I need to find the right word here um in this card as well this our lady of blessings bestowed it feels very um obviously it feels very like motherly and very gentle and very comforting so it feels like a completely different type of energy than this and this is might be might be what we encounter but then this is what's actually behind it you know See what we get next. Memory. Mm, I was kind of feeling like this card might come out, to be honest. I'm, I'm gonna pull out another one with it. Memory, what else wants to speak with this card about memory? Because I feel like this has to do with with unlocking some deeper, I, I wanna say the word instinctual, instinctual memories. The secret. You know, this card was right behind this card and I almost wanted to say, look, this card, the secret is like right behind it. Um, okay, so, E, <laughs> so many cards in that deck, <laughs> it's too crazy. Um, so part of this revelation, you know, here we are coming back to this, this realization has to do with things that are almost like embedded. When I see this this card, The Secret, and I think about like what's underneath, what's embedded, it, you almost see these like symbols and these patterns like beneath this face. Um, this is like our, I also wanna say like DNA memories, or these are our ancestral, these are our um, deep root chakra, instinctual survival, but also like beneath that. Like the, it, it's not, it's the spark. You know what? It's the spark of like, why? Why do we want to survive? It's not just the instinct to survive. It's like, what is the spark beneath that? What is the purpose? What is the reason? Like there's something, there's something, it just, it feels like going very deep. Perhaps even like you could think of this as going deep into the root chakra and from there uncovering these secrets memories really but it feels beyond personal memories it does feel beyond personal memories to me 
I hope that this is making sense. I kind of knew, I was like, this is a lunar eclipse, this is a blood moon, this is going, this is going deep, you know? Um, all right, so, so what is up? What's next? Strength. We're gonna be able to get through this time. I, I, I honestly, like, this feels like the message that I was needing as as a member of humanity like this is the message that I, I felt like was needed for humanity and it's coming out like there's so much hope here there's so much hope and it's like leaning on those that you love and finding ways to kind of sustainably sustainably care for your energy and keep you going and keep that fire keep that spark alive um you know, it's interesting because because this is in the sign of Taurus and with the color red, like I said earlier, I was thinking of the root chakra, but also with the Taurus being an earth sign, I'm going to see it as going like deep into the earth. But like as you go deeper and deeper, you encounter that like fire. That's the image. That's the image that is coming up with this. And so it's like this strength in going deep and being so deeply rooted that you this is the message. Oh, my goodness. You're so deeply rooted that you encounter that um, that deeper spark of purpose and that is what fuels you and that's what keeps you going and that's the sustainable energy, not the surface level energy that might come from things that like um, either are meant to like provoke certain feelings or get us sort of like on the, on the surface level riled up or like on a fear based or an anxiety kind of, you know, when things kind of rise to the surface and it's sort of that that is the like surface level kind of energy we're talking about and that's not sustainable and it's also not rooted and then here we're talking about deeply rooted energy yeah okay we're going somewhere with this what's next our lady who prevents interference i feel like there are forces in this universe that want to get in the way. <laughs> I'm holding this in, in strange uh, angles. Um, get in the way of this revelation that we're talking about here. These going, this going deep and this hitting that fire. I think that there are forces in this universe that um, for whatever, you know, I feel like it has to do with greed because that was the feeling I was getting going into this reading about sort of like the shadow side of materialistic desires. I think that there are forces that coming from a place of greed don't want us to realize that we have a deeper energy storage and hope and purpose and rather rely upon this kind of like surface level energy that we were talking about earlier. And this is Our Lady Who Prevents Interference. I feel like this is calling upon that sort of, um, that shield, that mantle, you know, you see her here with her with her mantle, that sort of keeps you, it almost can act like a filter, act as, as a shield to prevent this interference. But it might also come from kind of realizing realizing that that is possible and that's out there. I hope that that's making sense. Um, but it also feels like calling on your guides, you know, your higher self, your um, d divine, how you connect to the divine, calling on those forces to help you with this because it's not just like how we prevent interference, it's, it's leaning on our lady who prevents interference and realizing that within us and it is also within us but there's a greater um there's a greater knowledge i almost wanted to say the word technology but it's not technology it's like it's like the feeling of um there's a way there's there's something that might not intellectually make sense but like there is a way to filter through and i think it's something that we're going to be learning as well but like because we're so are in the age of discernment right there's a way that we're going to be learning how to do these these filters ourselves but it's all right to rely in some ways at this time on our um like our, our higher spiritual mentors and helpers and those that have the highest good for us and humanity in mind to help us with prevent this interference you know okay 
<laughs> Let's see what we have next. I think we at least have room for two or three more cards here to make our full, um, our full moon, our full, full moon. Okay, what's next here? Inspiration. So we're rising back up with this red butterfly um, and context. Ooh, I, there's some, I really like these cards together. Okay. So I feel like on the other side of this eclipse, when we feel like this pressure release has happened and it's kind of dissipated, that's the right word. The pressure release happens, it, it, it dissipates, and hopefully we take this opportunity to like root down deep to that place we were talking about. I think that then there's going to be almost like a volcano eruption. Hey, there we go. Once again, connecting that fire deep into the earth, there's gonna be like this volcano eruption of inspiration. And this is inspiration who comes from the heart. You know, we've had Our Lady, Our Lady come out twice. And um, this deck is very much connected to the heart, connected to the mother, connected to the rose. And this is like, we're talking heart inspiration of creativity, of like what it is that you wanna do, because it's rooted in that purpose and that drive and that, and that will, which is like the very will that maybe we came into this life like, born from you know what I mean it's connected to that that will and that's what drives us forward in terms of inspiration and I think that context is really important and what I want to say about context is it's both for incoming and outgoing information and it's more than just an information though it's like creations and, and intuition as well so what what it is that we are um, observing outside of ourselves and in taking as a part of our truth and then also what we are creating and putting out there I think that this card is coming out because it's, it's really important to pay attention to the context of what that is because one truth let me know if this is making sense because this is how it's coming into me and I have not unraveled this yet. So maybe we'll unravel it. But one, a truth in one context does not make it every, does not make it true in every context. And that same truth in a different context might actually not be true. So let's think about that in terms of information. I hope that this is making sense and ends up being helpful in some way. I don't know. We'll kind of bookmark it and see, like, let me know. <laughs> um, and, and then likewise, when you're putting your work and your energy out there, pay attention to the context in which you want to release that. And the context is going to make all the difference for how your creation, how your energy actually lands and what it does and um, what effect it can have because there are certain contexts in which maybe maybe it isn't safe to do it. Um, that could be an example. Or, and I, I think this comes from an intuitive place too, of realizing like, okay, where is the right avenue? Where is the right direction? Well, I wanna pull one more <laughs> and then we'll make our moon. Wait, I, I want it to be on the screen. Okay, let's pull one more. Any, anything else we need to wrap up this reading? Oh, we've got Cinnabar as a crystal. Perhaps this is a crystal that wants to work with us. Look how lovely and red it is. It says business and it says sacral chakra. So this is kind of connecting back to, I think when I first was stepping into this reading and feeling like it might have to do with some kind of like material desires and and gains. But business to me, it's like beyond, because um, the sacral chakra, I kind of think of that being connected to desire in some ways. And then and then business, like you, you automatically might think of like money and think of, you know, um, industry and that sort of thing. But I think also business, like when you say, um, it's none of your business. It's also like, where are you focusing your energy and ch channeling your energy? You know what I mean? So one person's business, their focus, their output of energy, 
what they are doing and creating in the world. That's their business. Do you know, see what I mean? Um, I'm not saying, I'm not going back to that first statement of like, that's none of your business. I just mean like this concept of business. I think it's beyond just like money. And I think it goes context, right? Um, but I think it goes back to what we were talking about. Like, what are you doing and what are you creating? Um, so I wonder if there's, cause like eclipses also feel so transformative, right? I wonder if the, this transformation comes from first, having this revelation, going deep within yourself with the intention from this revelation to go so deep that you find that sort of bubbling, fiery, spiritual, and deeply true drive. And then when you return back, you're kind of, you bring it back into the material world, into what you do how you feel inspired to do it, the context in which you do it, and then ultimately your business. Like what is it that you are creating and channeling and putting out there? And what are you offering the world? What is the energy exchange as well? Um, I hope that this makes sense. I realize I think that the last moon reading went really deep and this one is as well, but we, hey, we had a solar eclipse and now we're having a lunar eclipse and that is that is how it is. <laughs> so um, this is also kind of bigger messages for humanity at this time. So if you want a message that's a bit more personal to you and to your life and like what is, you know, what perhaps is going on, we're gonna be doing those readings this week. So be sure to set that notification bell because you can get a blood moon reading of your own. And we have a special stream that we dedicate to the moon reading. So keep an eye out for that. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope that you have a wonderful week. We've got plenty of time to kind of prepare for this intense stream of release, pressure release. That's the, that's the, that's the phrase, pressure release of energy. So. Do let me know how it goes for you and thank you so much for being here. I will see you next time.